I'm going to be making a video about how to create this scooter, which is somewhat based on stuff that I've seen and I've taken some liberties as well. It's for relative beginners, although if you're an absolute beginner, I think you'll probably have trouble, you know, sort of navigating the interface and, uh, you know, getting your 3D views um, right. But um, there's nothing overly difficult uh, about this, and um, it's going to utilize some pretty common techniques that you would use to make <laughs> much more complicated and and uh, detailed models but um, it'll still be fun to do all right and uh, we'll be using a lot of uh, primitives you know cylinders as you can see here and then taking cylinders and um, selecting regions of them or creating regions of them and doing various extrusions and scaling so very common and important techniques uh, to to use um, and we'll make some structures that would look like things that would turn around and perhaps turn this so that the handlebars could go up higher, that kind of thing. And, and then um, some pretty common, you know, things to make the, the tire. This is not a, a really detailed tire by any means or a realistic tire, but it's more of like a toy. Um, but, you know, we'll put in a little bit of detail and we'll do some beveling. All right, we we'll use the bevel modifier and we'll also probably do some beveling by hand. And um, we'll use the spin tool to place the, the spokes of the wheel. And you know, you can make this look as, as detailed as you want. And you know, you can make this, this the, uh, the spokes thinner or wider or put holes in them if you want, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, but that's basically what uh, what we're going to do. Look at another couple of views of this thing. All right, and some, a few reference images so I can remember what I did. All right. So while it doesn't look very detailed, it'll take some time to do that and to line things up. And I've tried to make it look uh, somewhat realistic. Uh, and, and mechanical without going crazy with that uh, because I do want to do this as a relative beginner tutorial and just to do nuts and bolts and holes and, and all the mechanical stuff that could go in here could take a could take a long time so uh, we'll just uh, we'll just do what we can uh, and have some have some fun and this is the way that the, the back tire will will connect most likely all right, and there's the different models of it. So I'll just keep these here as, as a reference so as we go along. And I think we'll we'll start off by making the handlebars and then this piece and we'll, we'll work our way down. All right. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I am in a uh, brand new scene. Uh, this is what you get when you start up Blender. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to Cycles Render and use GPU compute which allows me to use some of the processing power of my video card and I'll also turn on the screencast keys so that you can see the what I'm you know the keys that I'm hitting and a little bit of my mouse uh, I'm going to hit a a couple of times to uh, deselect and then to select everything the camera the cube and the light that is automatically there and I'm going to hit X and I'm going to press delete. So I've got a brand new scene and I'm ready to go. So once again, although it's this is a, you know, for beginners, I'm not that far beyond a beginner myself. Um, you know, it, it, it might be a little bit tough if you're absolutely brand new, but if you're struggling, you know, if you've played around with Blender a bit, you know, and you just want something to try to model and you want someone else to show you a few things and then you could use those things for you know bigger and better things then that you know that's that's kind of why I'm doing this so anyways I'm going to use the numpad on my keyboard and press 7 to go into top view you can see that up here and then 5 so that I have an ortho orthographic view which means I'm looking sort of directly straight down okay so I'm looking downwards right now and there's my 3D cursor right in the center of the stage. Stage, you can see the the x-axis and the y-axis there. So we're going to start with the handlebars, and the handlebars are made from a cylinder. 
So I'm going to bring in a cylinder primitive and the way that you do that, at least with keyboard shortcuts is you go Shift A and you can see it written down here, Shift A. All right, so Shift A and I'm gonna choose mesh because I want a mesh and I'm gonna scroll to where it says cylinder. Now, as soon as you bring that cylinder in and there it is, you can see some uh, values here and this may be closed for you. Just open it up, it says add cylinder. Uh, I'm gonna keep all the default va values all right, so we don't have to worry about that. But it is in the wrong orientation. I want it laying this way, so I'm going to have to rotate this. This is one of the things I struggled with and still struggle with sometimes. Like, in which, how, where I'm going to rotate this, but around what axis? Is it X, Y, and Z? So I often will go like this, either visually or in my head. <clears throat> I'm going to rotate this around the Y. So I'm going to go R, Y, that means rotate in the Y, 90 degrees. All right, RY90 is what I did there. Now, this is far too thick. And also I'm finding that the grid display is kind of distracting because the cylinder's part way in it. So I'm gonna turn that off, the display. So I'm gonna hit N, I'm gonna come over to display over here, and I'm gonna uncheck grid floor and get rid of that. Okay, so I'm just rotating my view around by holding in the middle mouse button, the wheel, the mouse wheel, essentially back to seven and actually no not back to seven so I'm going to scale this I want this to be thinner and longer but let's do the thinner part first I don't want to lose any of my X in fact now that I think about it, let's just lengthen it first I want it longer in the X axis so I'm going to scale and the way we scale is we press the S key <clears throat> and then the axis that I want to scale along. I want to scale along the X. So I'm going to go S, X, and then I'm just going to pull with my mouse like that. All right. Um, now, how far to pull? Well, it's just up to you. I'm just doing this by eye. So let's start with that. I don't want my handlebars that thick though, but I don't want to change the X length. I only want to change it in all the other axes, the Z and the Y. So I just know I want to keep my length. All right, so I'm gonna scale, but I'm gonna say, or I'm gonna press S, Shift X. All right, the Shift button, so I go S and then Shift and X, and that'll cancel it from scaling in the X, but allow it to scale in the other axis. So I'm gonna go S, Shift X, and I'm gonna push in to make it thinner, like that. Okay, now, I do actually want it a bit shorter in the X, now that I think about it, so I'm gonna go S, X, and I'm gonna push in instead of pulling out. So it gets shorter like, like that. And imagine that this Y axis here is like the orientation of the, of the scooter. Here, let's go back to top view, all right? So the handlebars will be out here, and then the scooter will go along this way. I want to create some of the, you know, the rubber or plasticky things that the kid holds on to. All right, or the big kid if you're an adult doing it. Instead of creating a new object, a new primitive, bringing it in and placing it, I'm just gonna copy what I have here and move it out and then adjust it. So I'll show you what I mean. To copy something, you press Shift D, duplicate, okay, Shift D. Uh, so I'm gonna do that right now. Shift D and then left click. Now. There is a copy here, but you don't see anything because it's right on top of the other one. So I'm gonna move it down and you see, oh, there's my original and there's the copy. Now, I don't want those grips on the end that long, so I'm gonna scale it shorter in the X. So I'm gonna go SX and make it shorter. And I can use this arrow to bring it along the X axis only, right? Don't, you know, pull it anywhere else. I don't have to have it touch yet, but just imagine that that's there. Would that be a re and I'm gonna zoom in with my uh, scroll scroll my mouse. And and now I'm holding the middle mouse button or the mouse wheel and I'm looking around. Don't worry about the thickness right now or any details, but does that look like it might be okay? I mean we can always build it and then adjust it. Let's go with that and let's make this thicker, wider, all right? But not longer. So let's scale it again, but not in the X. So let's go S Shift X. S, Shift X, and we're gonna pull out, not too much. And if it moves too quickly, you can always hold the Shift button afterwards, and you can move a, a slower pace. 
All right, I might do that again. Scale Shift X, and uh, we'll get something like maybe something like that. Okay, we'll see. All right, now um, let's go back to the picture. You can see that it's got some expanded areas and some sunken in areas. You know, so you can grip the thing. So I'm going to build those now because I've been scaling this and uh, moving it around I need to sort of reinitialize it if you think of like a stopwatch you know and you, you set it to go for you know 30 seconds or whatever and then and then you stop it and you want to do it again if you have to reset this thing maybe the stopwatch wasn't the best idea but we're going to reset this because if we come over here, watch this. I just hit N and open the side panel. Let's look at the dimensions for this. I have 0 0.929, 0 0.929, 2.58, whatever. Okay, so that's something or whatever. Um, but watch what happens if I do this next manipulation to sort of reset everything back to the beginning. Oh, it's not going to like get rid of this. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press, and you can do this from down here, Object, Apply, Rotation and Scale, or just Scale, depending on whether or not you rotated it or not. I can't remember, and it doesn't hurt to do it, but watch those numbers as I click this. Watch the numbers over here in the Scale area. Okay, Object, Apply, rotation and scale. Notice they went back to one. They've been reinitialized. It's like, okay, ground zero, we are ready to do new manipulations. This is necessary whenever you're editing something, scaling it or extruding or whatever. Well, you can't extrude in object mode. When you're scaling in object mode, which is what we're in, object mode, as opposed to in edit mode, where you're sort of inside the object like if you know any but anything about flash you know when you go into a symbol and you edit and you come out back to the regular scene view I don't know if that helped or not but if you scale or manipulate in edit mode you don't have to do that apply scale thing but if you scale or manipulate <clears throat> in object mode then you do it's just the way it is and sometimes I forget but anyhow, uh, let's let's just go back to object mode, and you'll notice I'm using some keyboard shortcuts. First of all, Shift A to bring in a new object, and then um, the Tab button to bring up the object or Edit menu, which you can get from down here. All right, and sometimes you hit the wrong one. All right, I want to make those expanded regions on my handlebar grip. All right, and so I'm going to go into Edit mode. Once you're in edit mode, you can choose from down here right in the middle, this icon or this icon or this icon. And you may notice that that changes here. Let me hit N to close that side panel so we can zoom in. All right. At this point, we are seeing the polygons. All right. Here, we are seeing and selecting edges. And here we are seeing and selecting, if we click on them, vertices. A single is a vertex, and plural, they're vertices. Um, <clears throat> for my next manipulation, it doesn't matter which mode you are in, so I'll just leave it there. <clears throat> in order to make those expanded and contracted regions, I actually have to set up little areas in my object uh, where I want to do that. For example, um, I don't want to just scale the whole thing out, expand the whole thing out. I mean, that's what I was doing earlier when I said scale shift X. There, there's the whole thing. I knew, there, get out of that. I want just the end maybe to be bigger and the middle to be smaller. In order to do that, I have to take this object and sort of split it in a way so I can only select the area that I want to make bigger. So the way we do that, or one of the ways anyhow, is to add something called an edge loop. So you just hover your mouse over the entire object and press Control R. All right, you see that in my screencast key? And you will get some kind of a colored line. In this particular theme of Blender I'm using, I'm going to get a pink line. If I left click, that line that was put in is now selected. And depending on what 
um, whether I had vertex mode or edge mode or polygon mode, depending on which one was active, um, that's what I see. I see <clears throat> the whole row of vertices. If I was in edge mode, I'd see the whole row of just a line, that kind of thing. Anyhow, I've now pressed the left mouse button, and if I move my mouse, I can move the edge loop. So it's called an edge loop or a ring or whatever. And I'm going to move that to maybe there, if I think that's a decent position. If I deselect now, I now have created a separate zone or region that I can manipulate compared to this other region here. So I've sort of split it, not in half, more like in one-sixth and five-sixth or something. All right? Now, I can reselect this and move it again if I want to, and I tend to like to do that in edge mode, so I click on the middle one. Um, in order to reselect the whole edge, I press Shift and Alt at the same time and click on part of it. If I just, you know, zoom in again, if I just click on that part, I only get that edge. Or if I just click on that part, I only get that edge. I can go around and sh hold shift and click, and I'd have to go all the way around, make sure I didn't miss any. But a faster way, deselect with A, is to hold shift and alt and click one part of it. And any part, any edge that is connected will all be selected. So that's what you see with that green line. All right? So I could now, using my manipulators, I could move this. Now be careful, don't go moving it in the Z axis unless that's the effect you want. Or in the Y, I just want to move it lengthwise. Maybe I want to move it to there. All right, fine, A to deselect. Now, I want to expand this. It's some very common techniques in modeling that you would need to know, All right, and very simple ones as well. All right. In order to select this whole area, I think it'll be easier if I switch to polygon mode and then I show you, all right? So I can select one polygon because I'm in polygon mode versus if I'm in edge mode, I can select one edge, that edge or that edge or that edge or, or, or the whole row of edges. But it's easier in polygon mode because I can also shift alt and click and get all of the polygons that are connected together in this area whereas in this area it's all one long group like that so before this edge was in here if i shifted shift alt and click i would select everything try to expand a region it would just expand the whole thing but i now have a dedicated region here that i can work with now the way that we expand things other than scaling, I'll show you what scaling would do. If I want to scale this, but I don't want to change the length in the X direction, I just want it to come out, all right? I could go S, Shift X, like we did before, but watch what would happen, S, Shift X, watch this. Now that's a great effect if you're trying to make a trumpet, all right, Control Z. But that's not what I want to do. I want just that region to expand. So what, what I need to do is I need to perform something called extrusion, another extremely common thing. When I perform extrusion, all right, and that's done by pressing the E key, it will create new geometry right at the same spot, like a duplicate, which can then be expanded. And it won't sh expand the whole section the whole you know handlebar it'll just expand that region so watch this all right now at first you're not going to see anything i'm going to hit well you might see something watch this with those polygons selected i'm going to hit e and left mouse click to accept now you do actually see some more dots showing up it looks a bit different let's let's do that again and zoom in okay so watch this area e see those new dots that came in it has created an exact row of polygons on top of the previous ones. I could move these out, and there are the old ones, and there are the new ones, but I don't want to do that. I want them laying right on top of each other. But they are linked together. They're not just like two pieces of paper that are separate. They're glued together. So watch this. Watch this end here. I am going to scale Shift X, 
and watch what happens this time. S, Shift X, pull your mouse out. See these things? We didn't see them before. That's because I extruded rather than just scale. I extruded first, then scale. Now we're gonna be doing this all the time. It will become second nature to you. So don't freak out about it right now, about how it works or whatever, just, just follow along. Now, look, it's the same on both sides because I equally scaled out. I don't know if I explained that very well. So I have a raised region, which is great. I want another one. Okay, so how am I going to do this? I'm going to put in another edge loop and create a small region that I want to do this to. All right, because if I just shift alt and click all of this and hit E to extrude and scale, it's going to scale the whole thing out. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to see a small region of, of um, extrusion. So uh, I'm just going out of that. Control R, you get a pink line and it goes right in the middle. Click and pull your mouse. I want it down here, and I want it thinner than this area. Okay, deselect. All right, I'm going back into polygon mode. Shift Alt and click all these polygons. Okay, set yourself up where you can see it well. E to extrude, and I see there's some dots. There's some more geometry right there. I'm gonna scale Shift X, S, Shift X, pull. Now, I don't need to come out quite as far, A to deselect, as this one. All right, now let's go back into object mode and see how this looks. All right, now don't worry about the fact that it looks all streaky and stuff. We're going to deal with that soon. But that's the beginning of the rubberized part, the grip of my handle. I want to do a little more, however, on this. I want to make it a bit more detail. Let's have some more fun with this. So let's go back into edit mode. I'm going to do that by pressing tab and choosing edit. Now, I don't know if your Blender has that interface or that, you know, shortcut key set up or not. If not, just do it down here. I want more stuff going on. I need, you know, like another little region and another little region, at least two more little regions that I can extrude. So let's go Control R and let's do two. Roll your mouse wheel up. As you scroll your mouse wheel up, you get more of these things. They're called edge loops, all right? So I'm going to roll it up. By default, whenever you click it, you get one. You're not going to get zero because what will be the sense of pressing the keys? So you get at least one. Roll your mouse wheel up. Now you have two. You get another one. Left click to accept and then right click to finalize. Now, I've set my mouse up to be similar to Windows clicking. I don't know if yours might be backwards to that or not. And if it is, I strongly recommend that you look into going up into File, User Preferences, how to set your mouse up like a Windows mouse. Now, if I had these, if I clicked away by accident, I can still get back to these edges. I want to select them. Shift Alt and click one, and then Shift Alt and click the other. And I can Shift Alt and click another, Shift Alt and click another, but I don't need that. I want those two, but they're pretty far away. Now there are ways I could, there's a few ways I could do this, but the what I wanted to show you is if you have two edges sort of parallel to each other, you can scale them and they're just an edge. All right, I'm not gonna scale them and shrink the actual thinness of the line. What'll happen though, if I scale these in the X direction, see the way the X is going sort of horizontally? If I scale that in the X, I can bring them closer together or further apart, watch this. I'm gonna go S, X, only in the X. I don't wanna scale them in any other demand. If I just go S, and you know, I can squish that. I just want to bring them closer together. S, X, push your mouse in. Or S, X, and pull your mouse out. I want these, ah, sometimes it depends where your mouse is too. I'm gonna start again. What you do, by the way, is it's, it's operating from the origin point here. So put your mouse far out on your screen, then go S, X, and then pull it in. If you do this with your mouse like right here, S, X, you, you don't have as much room, although that's, that is working for me. And then you can also cross over, by the way. If you ever get that, you've crossed over the origin, and you're moving back, the polygons have flipped. They're facing inwards now instead of facing out. So just, just be aware of that. So. I'm going to deselect and start again. SX from out here. I want to pull them like 
that, let's say. Okay, cool, I like that. Now, I'm gonna go into face selection, polygon, same thing as down here, and I'm gonna shift alt and click that whole row. I can still move the whole row, by the way, and I want that right there. Now, I'm gonna do another kind of extrusion, but I'm not going outwards, I'm going inwards this time. I'm gonna create an indent. Now, watch this. If I just scale now, now that I've created those edge loops and then selected faces and selected the whole thing, if I just scale, it'll pinch it in the whole object here. Watch this. I'm not gonna scale though in the X though. I don't wanna scale lengthwise. I just wanna scale and have it go in. So watch this. S, Shift X, and it pinches the whole thing. If you're trying to make an hourglass or something, maybe that would work. But watch what I want to do. I want to extrude first and then shift X. Let's try that. E, left click to accept. I can see the new geometry. Don't deselect this, keep it selected. Now, S, shift X. Pull in, see the way it sinks in just there. And I get like a cutaway type situation. All right, let's deselect and come back out into object mode and look. Now, it's getting difficult to see this. You can't really see the details. It's not, I don't know, it's too shiny or not shiny. Or there's no shadows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and hit N, and I'm going to scroll down to and close up all these, all right, to where it says shading. Okay, you see the shading. I'm going to click that to open this area. I'm gonna choose a material called a matte cap, and already it chooses a default material, but that's not what I want. I'm also gonna click ambient occlusion. You see the way some, some darkness comes in? It creates some shadows, and you can adjust this as well if you want them darker, whatever. It's gonna be a little easier to see, but I don't want this white. I want this one right here, all right? It's the one I almost always choose, and I just find it's the perfect balance of lightness and darkness for modeling. I can see the details, all right? And it's a, ple it's a pleasant um, shader or material to use. All right, well, we're not quite done because, and I know this is taking a long time, but again, as, as a beginner type thing, um, this is stuff that I stumbled upon or, or, or discovered through, you know, videos, tutorials or whatever that I learned to do that I always do and I feel it must be done. It must be done. Here's the thing. These lines are super sharp. This does not look good. And I don't mean these lines here. We'll deal with that. These edges right there and here and here and here and here and even at the very end right there. You do not want to be putting your hands on those handlebars. And so we are going to do something called beveling. We're going to bevel, essentially round these edges. Now, you might think that you can just use something called a subdivision surface and you can use a subdivision surface and we will, but that's not going to fully help us with the rounding. And so we are going to bevel. Before we bevel, we want to make sure that, let's close that up, that our scale is set to one, that we have, uh, if we're in object mode, that we have done the object, apply, scale, or rotation and scale. But we are at one anyhow, so we're okay. Because if you're not, you won't get always the right results. Anyways, to bevel this, we have a couple of options. We could try in object mode, okay, sort of on the outside of the object. We could try clicking the wrench, coming to add modifier, bevel, turning the segments up maybe and adjusting the width. And we could see if we like that. But I'm going to do this by hand instead. I'm going to go into edit mode. And I like to be in edge selection. And I'm going to select all of the edges that I think need to be beveled. All right, so if you don't know which edges need to be beveled, then follow along with what I do. And then, you know, you can decide if you think I'm right or, or not. Um, certainly all these edges are 90 degrees. They're too sharp. So this edge here, all right, so I'm going to select that whole edge. Shift Alt and click part of it and it'll get the whole thing. I'm gonna turn my model around a bit. I know this edge is pretty sharp and do that. When I bevel, um, 
the size of the faces is important and so I sometimes will bevel a, some of them at the same time not one at a time I'm going to do at least two but these ones here are very shallow see this dark sort of brownish face here and the raw faces it's thinner than these and when I bevel you'll see what I mean this won't work as well so so I'm just going to bevel these two watch this okay set yourself up in a position I don't need to see both of them they're going to act the same way so I just want to see this one watch what it does to bevel this by hand I call this you click or press control B control B and then a faint dotted line will appear let me do that again see my origin here this is the origin of my 3d object if I go con I'll put my mouse out here so you can see it a bit better control B a dotted line will appear with a cross pointing towards or connected to that origin I'm essentially beveling from the origin anyways what you do is you pull outwards to make a region it's kind of cutting into the object and pull inwards to make that region smaller so choose there's no hard and fast rule that I know of uh, I just don't go like nuts like that they are like crossed over okay and I don't want to bevel like that's like so tiny you can't see it just choose a region that you think okay maybe there maybe that's gonna be enough but that's not all we're gonna do we've just kind of sliced it but we didn't round it yet to round it you're gonna roll your mouse wheel up and I'm gonna roll my mouse wheel right now so watch that blue area one did you see that line two three that's enough click your left mouse button to finish it it's still selected now what we've done is we've added some roundness to that sharp sharp edge all right now I have a tendency to round too much I like a, a sort of toy like fantasy like plasticky look I'm not very good at extreme specific realism and I know that so you may not want as much bevel as I do but we're not done with this just have a look I'm going to deselect let's go back into object mode and see now again don't worry about the fact that it doesn't look very smooth Do you see the way that's casting some light now and it's a bit more round it looks a little bit more natural all right whereas these just look like super duper sharp like a robot did it let's go on and continue to bevel before we uh, do any more I'm gonna select this edge now and this edge because I know that this one at the back and I'm just holding the shift button and the middle mouse button to move and then the middle mouse button alone to rotate so I so I'm doing this kind of thing okay that kind of thing all right okay I know I want to bevel those so I'm gonna go control B and I see my dotted line and I'm gonna pull away from there I'm gonna, and I don't want to pull like that I just want to pull you know like that maybe one two three and if you get four in there instead big deal doesn't matter the thing to remember though is every time you do this you are adding more geometry if I go over to face view I've added a bunch of polygons all the way around and my poly count and vertex count or vertice count will go up I don't particularly care though so all right just notice that this is now rounded as well so compare that to this what looks better that or this let's bevel this area as well I'm going into edge selection I find it easiest to use that all right and I'm going to what am I doing uh, control tab oh yeah that's the other thing when I first started with uh, blender I was clicking these all the time all right control tab and then you choose which one edge shift alt and click that edge shift alt and click that now here's something to think about what edges should you bevel how would you know you're just like okay so uh, I'm supposed to bevel something like okay is it this one well you could bevel that I mean it it is you know uh, where uh, with a 90 degrees and you could bevel this one right here and it might be worthwhile doing it might not but the ones that I tend to do are the ones on the outside if they're at the bottom of a pit or a groove um, I tend to not do them but sometimes I do so I'm grabbing the outside ones so you just scan your model and you go 
which edges are on the outside that look sharp. Now forget about this area, we'll get to that later. All right, so let's do this. But these ones don't have as, uh, they're not as thick as these. So I'm just gonna bevel a little. So I'm gonna go Control B, I'm gonna pull. And by the way, you'll you'll have trouble. You'll find yourself pulling this way and that and not getting it to work. Just, just take your time until, see it's not even working. Ah, there it's going. Okay, so I'm just gonna go like that. One, two. Hey, I'll just put in two that time. I think I put in two. Yeah, I put, I rolled my mouse up and put two edges in there. Now, this is what we have. Now, this doesn't look exactly like my original image. I only put in one sunken area, but you know, maybe that's fine. Or I can do another one, we'll see. But I wanna show you something. Let's, by the way, save, 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 right? You know that. Um, I'm, let's smooth this out now and start enjoying what it, what it looks like. I'm gonna come over to the wrench icon on the side add modifier, subdivision surface, click that. Already it's starting to look a little bit better, but I'm gonna come over to subdivisions and under view, I'm gonna click it and bring it up to two. And it's looking even better. Now we're not done yet because we can still come over to shading on the side and you know, it might be hidden under something and, check and click smooth. I'm gonna deselect now, have a look at that. That's looking much smoother, but there might be some weird coloration uh, where it doesn't, doesn't look quite right. Because when you add this modifier called subdivision surface, um, what it does, here, I'm gonna show you something here. Let's look in, ed, in uh, edit mode, all right? That weirdness is when you have, when you can see your lines and all of a sudden they sort of disappear, but you know they should be there. There's something we need to do, and I'll show you that in a second. But just get a feel, in fact, I'll switch over to polygon. Just get a feel for how many polygons, each of these is a polygon. And of course, all of these little tiny ones are polygons as well, but just get a sense for how many there are. There's a bunch. I am going to uh, go back into object mode and I'm gonna click apply. Then I'm gonna back out of that real quick. <laughs> all right, and just have a look at the polygons. Do you see how many there are? There's a billion of them now. Well, not quite a billion, but a lot. And it's also made some weird patterns here. So while it is amazing and good, um, it creates a lot of polygons. It subdivides everything you've got in two or in four or in eight or whatever it is. Um, and it multiplies them with polygons. And then your computer starts to lag and have some trouble uh, depending on how much you've done. So I am going to back out of that, good, it's gone. But I do want that, uh, I don't think it's completely gone, is it? Where is my subdivision surface? There it is, okay. Now, you can also turn it off with the eye, all right? The reason I, w I got confused is because smoothing is on. Let's turn off smoothing, make it flat. Okay, there it's back to where it was. If you click the eye on it means I want to see the effect of the modifier, in this case subdivision surface, or I don't. And sometimes it's nice to not have it on uh, in order to, to work. But I'm going to keep it like that and I'm going to keep smoothing on and I'm going to do something. I'm going to come in here and I want to fix this up. And I, I can't really explain it too well, but except for the fact that um, you can see that it looks like it stretches out here, like a telescope kind of. It, it was straight before, here I'll turn it off. It's straight, okay, this is what I was working on before. It's straight, but when you put subdivision surface, it kind of uh, pulls sometimes and stretches and it needs to be reined in or tightened. And the way that we tighten things is using those edge loops or supporting edges. So. I'm, I'm looking in front view, by the way. I'm, uh, I don't know if I have been explaining it all. Uh, I mean, I could look in top view, that doesn't matter. Seven, that's what we're, where we were before. What I'm gonna do is go Control R, and it's gonna put an edge loop right in the middle. I'm gonna left click, and then I'm gonna slide my mouse down and see the way it's pushing that area. I'm gonna slide my mouse pretty much right to the end. And if I now deselect and come back and look in, in the object mode, it's fixed up that problem of the stretching. It's pushed sort of that jelly-like polygonal mass, if that makes sense, into its place and say, you stay there instead of stretching out and coming out like that. 
Now, often when you use subdivision surface, you'll get a problem at the end here. And I'm kind of surprised that, although you don't need to apply it, by the way, to, to get the effects of it. But these little grooves often do need some work here. Okay, so what you do is you go into, into edit mode and it's bubbled up a little bit here. Watch what happens. And, and you can also see that the edge, the line, the, it disappears here because it is bubbling up. Watch this. Control R over the area that you want to put the edge loop in roughly. All right, so if I want it here, I'm not going to go Control R over here. Okay, if I want it in this area, I'm going to put my mouse there, Control R, left click, now watch the bubbly area. Slide your mouse and it sharpens up. Now you don't have to slam it right in the corner, just put it, put it there. Now let's go out for a second and see how much sharper that is. I don't want it super sharp though, I want it a little bubbly, I already told you I like the toys and the stuff, but look at it here, it kind of, I mean, it looks kind of cool, but it kind of just, it's not tight, and I, when I say tight, I mean like cool tight, I think that's what I mean. Anyways, let's look at this, again, see the way the edges are under this bubbly stuff, because the subdivision surface is kind of stretching and interpreting things like you trying to interpret what I'm talking about. So I'm putting an edge loop and I'm bringing it close to the end and I don't have to slam it right to the end unless you get some weird artifact, but that looks fine to me, that's okay. And you often will have to do that on these surfaces as well. But because I beveled, I have more edges here that, that kind of keep everything tight. Um, I really only put, put an edge in this groove on that side. I didn't put one on the other side and you really should. So. I, Control R and I slide it up to in there. And eventually we just work at it quicker. All right, so I got that, I got that. I don't seem to have to do anything with the ends, so. You know, now, uh, this is looking almost a little bit too sharp to me. And y you can sometimes come in here and see, I got a lot going on in there. I, I kind of, you can shift alt and click that. And I could try pulling these out. No, I'm not gonna do that. Some work, so I do need one up here though. You know, it's a little bubbly. Let me just try pulling one in and see. You know, I can already see that it and it pushed some of that stuff and it looks better. I don't know if you noticed that at all. Maybe I should have done it slower, but all right. Now, all that just for a handlebar. I'm kind of thinking that might be just a bit too too big and so I want to scale this and I'm just rotating it and looking at it in every direction but especially how it see how it would connect to the handlebar I kind of want it shrunk in just a little little bit but I don't want to change the length so I'm going to do I'm going to go s shift x scale shift x and I'm going to watch and I'm bring it in like that and that's going to be it so I'm going to take this and I'm going to use the x arrow I'm going to move it over all right, so the idea is that I would have two of these handlebars. <clears throat> I'm just wondering how far across uh, they should be. Now this thing is right in the middle, right? Yeah, all right. So if I push that on, no, see if I push there, I start to see it underneath, so I don't want it there. Um, I wanna try something and see how far I want this, how long I want this handlebar to be. So. Here's what I'm gonna do. Because that object has its origin right in the middle and I haven't edited it at all. In other words, it's just a cylinder. Move that out of the way. And so the very middle of it is the origin. I can mirror an object right across it. It's like symmetrical, it's like perfectly symmetrical sort of. So if I position this grip say right there and I go I really like that position there I want one on the other side as well what you do is make sure the cursor is in the middle of this object and I'll show you how to do that later because it already is no I'm going to show you now I'm going to click right there okay my 3d cursor is just somewhere in space I need the 3d cursor to be in the middle of this object. I kept talking about origin, but it's really the 3D cursor, which acts like a pivot point, essentially. And I wanna mirror something, and I wanna rotate it around, like on a string, and you're gonna swing it over to the other side. So 
the position, you know, the, the, the center that you swing it around is the 3D cursor. And it's got to be right in the middle of the object or right where you want it to be. And you'll see a few other examples of this later. So here's what I'm going to do. How the heck do I do it? What do I do? Click there, click there. No, I mean, that's close. You select the object. There, I selected the object. Go Shift S, cursor to selected. And that will bring the 3D cursor to the, to the I guess, the center of that the object you just selected. So if I wanted the 3D cursor right in the center of this object, I go Shift S, cursor to selected. But I don't. This one, Shift S, cursor to selected. Now, imagine a string connecting this to this. I'm going to mirror this and swing it around, bang, to the other side. Exactly the same position, but on the other side. However, am I seeing through there? Let's deselect it. I don't think so. Okay, never mind. Select the object you want to mirror, and doesn't matter about subdivision. Go Add Modifier, Mirror, and then in what with respect to what object what is the mirror object that you want to swing it around well the cylinder so i'm going to use the eyedropper and click the cylinder all right now why didn't it work well sometimes it's weird and you got to experiment with which axis all right all right now i'm not going to hit apply yet because i think that might be too wide you know too far apart okay in fact, I'm going to move on a little bit to the next step in order to determine that exactly. I'm going to select the cylinder and I'm going to go Shift D to make a copy of it. And I'm going to rotate this so it's standing upwards like that. I'm going to rotate around the Y axis. Rotate Y 90 degrees and I'm going to pull it down. All right. So just leave that there for a second. Yeah, I think those stick out too far. I don't think they're supposed to stick out that far. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this middle one, and I'm going to scale this only in the X and shorter. So I'm going to go S, X, and I'm going to push my mouse in, and that's going to make it shorter like that. Then I've got this. Now there's a couple of ways you could deal with it. I think what I'm going to do is just X out the mirror. Get rid of it. Move this back to where I want it. Maybe there. Select this again. The 3D cursor is right in the middle, so add mirror once again. The mirror object is, no, I'm adding the mirror on the wrong object, sorry. Select your handlebar. Mirror, select the handlebars, and it happens to be in the Z direction. There we go, now that's better. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the mirror, leaving the subdivision surface. Now, it was second in the stack there. It says applied modifier may not have functioned well, but it, it did just fine. Okay, now, uh, I wanna do some work on this very, very briefly. Uh, although I made these a little narrower, I still think this is a bit thick, so I'm gonna go S, Shift X. I want it a little narrower. And I'm also going to select it and just go smooth. And that'll make it look better. I don't need a subdivision surface on that. I'm also going to take this piece and go, I want to scale this. I want it thinner. But I don't want it shorter, I don't think. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to, I'm going to scale this, but not in the Z direction. So I'm going to go Scale, Shift, Z. Not in the Z. And by the way, you will see those lines there. You see the salmon color or brown or red color and the green? That means X and Y only. There's no blue in there. If I want to scale this in the Z, all right, or, or say uh, not in the X, but in the Z and the Y, watch this. Scale Shift X. You see the blue line there? That means okay, blue is okay, green is okay, but not 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 X. So I want this Scale Shift Z, and I want to make it a little thinner, like this. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring this. No, oh, it's already attached. Good. Okay, I'm going to bring that up. I'm not sure safe if I like this connection if it looks convincing I'm not a structural engineer or whatever so I don't know how they would connect really well I want to do something that I think helps I'm going to take this shift D and I'm going to um, scale this in the X smaller like that looks really weird looks like static on a TV I'm going to scale this a bit bigger uh, but not in the X not in the length I already scaled in length scale shift X and I'm just going to do that. And you have to decide if you think that's an improvement or not. Um, I might need to put some, it's a little bubbly, 
I didn't do subdivision surface, but smoothing sometimes looks weird, so you can try this. Control R, roll your mouse wheel, get two. Left click to accept, right click to finalize. But I don't want them there. Scale in the accent pull. I want these green edges near the end. This is what happens when you have that um, situation. And I may not have explained that situation well. That's actually an improvement, so I'm gonna leave it. Now, this isn't smooth yet, but that's okay. I'm not super happy with these handlebars. I would have liked to have done something else to them. Do I still have, I don't have the mirror on anymore. Um, I find they look a little bit, you know, I wanted something a little bit more, but uh, actually that one doesn't have much more, so they're, they're just fine. Okay, and we've already spent a long time, almost an hour, just doing that, as I've tried to explain, and I hope it's been relatively understandable. All right, let's assume that this handlebar, the whole th mechanism can go up and down, all right? You can lengthen it if you want it taller, maybe your kid is taller, or you can, or you can shorten it. In other words, you got some kind of a twist thing, uh, like on a cheap selfie stick, okay? You know, the way you can lengthen it like that and make it smaller. But on, on this, you need a, 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 a screw of some sort, <laughs> whatever you call that thing. All right, so what I'm getting at is this, all right? So you could turn that so the handlebars can be adjusted higher or lower. So we're just working our way down and I figure that's a good thing to work on now. So I'm gonna create this and this little sleeve. So this piece kind of fits into that and you loosen it and the handlebars go down or up and you tighten it for that position. All right, so um, I think I wanna shorten this a little bit. Another way to shorten something is to go into edit mode and maybe choose in this case because it's a cylinder choose face and because this face is connected to all of this if i pull this it'll shorten the whole thing all right i could just go like that for now all right now i want to create this little thing here in fact, let me zoom to the no oh, okay here i want to create this um how the heck am i going to do that i'm going to bring in another circle or whatever and position it and everything Oh, I'm just going to reuse some of the geometry I have. In other words, if I copy the cylinder like this, Shift D to duplicate, bring it all the way down there. If I then scale it in the Z only to shorten it till it's something like that. Okay, we'll zoom in. Okay, just bring it up roughly. Period key to zoom in. All right. I could use that, couldn't I? I only have to maybe scale shift Z, scale it, but not in the Z, make it wider. And I now kind of have something that could go on there. So just reuse the pieces if you can. It's in the same orientation. Now, in order to create that gear-like structure, okay, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to, well, first thing I want to do, because I've been scaling and manipulating, I haven't done this for a while, Object, Apply, Rotation and Scale on the object selected. I don't really care about doing it on this one because I'm not going to do anything else with that, but I am going to do something with this and I'll show you what that is. I'm going to go into edit mode and I can see all my polygons. Now let me just have a look at something here. I did it right to the end. All right. All right. That's because I'm in polygon mode. If I was in that, I'd see my vertices or my edges. I want to be in this mode. I find it easiest. And I'll show you a very, very common technique uh, that is used to make things like gears and um, knobs, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to shift alt and click on one of these lines and that's gonna select the whole row. Now, if I shift alt and click on just the polygon itself face, I get the whole row, same, same thing. I've selected everything here, but I don't, do I want everything? I don't think I want everyone. I want to select every other one, like this, 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 this. I used to do that. Now, shift, alt, and click everything, and go to select, because I want to affect how, how what I've selected. Select, and go to checker, deselect. Like, you know, the way checkers are like, you know, black, and then white, and black, and white, and that kind of thing. Checker, deselect. When you click that, you'll get some um, options here. And I've got it set to select or deselect every second of the things, in this case, polygons, all right? So shift, alt, and click on that and go to select, 
check or deselect and it'll remember the last setting and that's fine or skip one all right so this is what i've got just trying to decide if i want to do it this way or if i want some edge loops in there let's just try it and see how how it looks okay so i've got all that selected come over here under mesh tools where it says add extrude individual we're going to extrude but i'm not going to press e on my own i'm just going to use this button what i'm going to do is i'm going to click this button and pull my mouse down as i do that these are going to get pushed out let's try it X click and pull down and they come out now you don't need to come out that far unless you're making a propeller of an airplane and you certainly might want to do that using this technique I'm just going to come out to say there I'm going to deselect now and come back out and look at my work huh. it's like a gear but it's very sharp no one's going to want to turn that so I'm going to select this and I'm going to come over to subdivision surface of two and then you go what the heck just happened it looks almost organic okay the subdivision surface is pulling and stretching and trying to round things that were flat before but we're not done yet. With this selected, I'm gonna go into edit mode and you'll see sort of a cage around how it looked in polygon mode, just sort of without the subdivision surface like that versus how it looks when it gets pulled in by the subdivision surface. We're going to hover our mouse over here and go control R until you get what looks like a gear. Now, if you get this, that's not what it is. You, you can do different things you can put your mouse in different place i want this i want to left click and pull up not to the very top i'm not slamming it to the top i want some roundness left there i'm going to do the same and do it again but i'm going to pull this one to the bottom so i can click and pull near the bottom you don't have to be perfectly symmetrical if you don't want now let's go into object mode and have a look at that that's what it looks like so far if I hit smoothing, I get this effect. Okay, now, I want to shorten the scale in the Z. I think it's a bit too wide. I also, I think, want to expand this. Scale shift Z. Well, that's what I ended up that time with. Now, can I do anything else on top? Nah, it doesn't matter. Um... All right, well, I'm not done there anyhow. That is my effect right there, all right? But I also want to add this piece here so that this looks like it goes in and then this controls it, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take this piece again and that might still be too long. Yeah, I think it's too long. I'm gonna scale in the Z. Handlebars now look too wide. I'm going to move this up again to about there. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to Shift D to duplicate it and scale it in the Z. Make it smaller. Make it like, you know, maybe like that. Bring it down. But it's the exact same width. So let's scale this, but not in the Z. Scale Shift Z and make it look like this. So it's kind of like a sleeve that that thing goes into. But we need to do more we need to bevel this so let's go into edit mode and let's shift alt and click this edge this is the only sharp edge that's going to show the other one's pushed underneath this so let's go control b pull it back and roll my mouse up a few times onto three now you'll notice that i didn't although i scaled this i didn't go apply scale sometimes i do and sometimes i don't sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't really matter apply uh smoothing all right um and that's just the way that it is and uh just zooming in and out trying to decide if this looks big enough scale in the z i think it's, it looks a little wimpy so we'll see though um you know then that's in order to make that look thinner i gotta have the next one as thicker i guess so we're gonna go on let's take this shift d and pull it down to somewhere in that vicinity and um, I'm gonna make this wider uh, I also want to make it a bit shorter I think uh, scale shift Z bring it out but let's zoom in a bit to make sure we're not scale shift Z tiny bit more let's just see what that's gonna look like 
Okay, don't worry about that discoloration yet. Let's see if it's going to look kind of realistic. Okay, that this piece could go down in. Okay, yeah, I guess so. All right, now, where are we at? We're going to have to do like the shock absorber thing and that thing and that. Um, and it's hard to tell where to do them sometimes. So what I'll do is I'll take this piece, Shift D and copy it and bring it down here. And it, it doesn't fit this piece anymore. So I'll scale Shift Z to make it bigger. And I'm just gonna put that there for the moment because I'm thinking the bottom piece is gonna go on there. Now, by the way, this looks all weird. It doesn't look solid somehow. And that's because I've got smoothing on, okay? I've got smoothing and I need some edge loops to tell it to smarten up and be, uh, you know, more sharper, a little bit sharper. All right, and I may need that some there as well. Uh, I was just trying to think here. Um, it looks like the handlebar is up as high as it would go, so I would like to actually lower all that. Now, I'm not joining anything yet. I'm just going to select, and the way I'm selecting is I'm Clicking on one, which is this is mirrored, uh, okay, and I'm click shift and clicking, shift and clicking, shift and clicking, and I want to move all of these down. I want the handlebars up so high, and yeah, that's that's okay. Yeah, that's a little bit more realistic. They weren't not at the extreme, so they could still go up. Okay, all right. Now, what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to create this part here. Here, let me. Let me show you uh, what I'm talking about here. Um, it comes down, all right, and then there's this this disc, and then these to hold on the the the, uh, the wheel and the tire, and then that kind of thing. So I think we need to make that thing in order to know where other pieces are going to go. So here's the thing: I need to create some kind of device to hold uh, the wheel. And the way I came up with, I'm going to show you what it is, but I need to build it. I'm not copying it from another piece. I want to build it right here. But my 3D cursor is, is up there. In fact, I could select everything and I could move it all up so that it's a, it looks a little bit more like it's, you know, like resting on the ground a little bit more. I just A to select everything and moved it. That wasn't important. That's not what I wanted to do. But anyways. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this last piece and I'm going to go into edit mode and in face selection I'm going to select that one face because it's central to this object. And I'm going to go shift S cursor to select it. I told you I'd be doing that again. We'll be doing it a bunch of times. I can now deselect and go back into object mode and my 3D cursor will stay there. It's on that polygon. Okay. And it's right in the middle of this object because I chose a central thing. That just makes it easier when I bring in a new object that I have to work with and you know manipulate and it's and I want it to be roughly in that position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a plane mesh, shift A, mesh, plane. Fortunately for us, it's in the right orientation, but it's not the right uh, size. So I'm going to just scale. And I want it to roughly fit under there. I'm going to hit the period key to zoom in. I want it to fit there. I'll move it down just a little bit. All right, it's going to take a little bit of manipulation to, to build this. And um, what I'm going to do, essentially, I'll just show you, is I'm going to build this, okay, like that, from a plane. I'm going to build that. It's going to come down. It's going to narrow in like that on both sides of a, of a wheel, which we'll get to in a bit, okay? Now, I need to be able to see this thing better. So I'm going to select that piece and I hit H to hide it. This piece, H to hide it. If I want to bring those back, I'm going to go Alt H and that'll bring back everything. So I just want to go select it and go H and H. Now I can see my plane better. And here's what I want to do. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to put in two edge loops. Control R puts in one, roll my mouse wheel up and left click gives me the other. I don't want to move them from the center position, so I'm going to right click and just to finalize that. But I do want to move both of them equally out. So I'm going to go, uh, I think I do, yes I do, scale X, 
and I'm going to pull to about there. All right, so if you look down, it's kind of halfway that space and that space similar, not exact. Now, what I want to do is I want to bend that edge and that edge down. I could select both of them and just start doing this, but I have another way that I want to show you um, because I'm going to be building this. Okay, so just watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this edge, not the outer edge, that edge and go Shift S, cursor to select it, it'll go right in the middle of that edge. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to switch this pivot point to 3D cursor. My 3D cursor is now acting as a pivot point right there. If I select this edge now, if I rotate, rotate around the Y, it will pivot around that spot there. And that's what I want to do. I want to rotate it 90 degrees to face downwards. The thing is, is it 90 positive or 90 negative? Let's find out. R, Y, 90. Ah, it's going down. It's the right way. I think that's what I wanted to do, right? Okay, yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Now, I'm going to repeat that with the other one. I'm going to use this as a pivot point. Shift S, cursor to select it. I'm already on pivot point, so my 3D cursor is acting as a pivot point. And I want to rotate in the Y, rotate Y 90, but notice it goes up, hit the minus sign. So you don't go minus 90, you go 90 minus. Now they're both facing down, so I can select that edge and this edge, and I can now just pull them to lengthen them. I'm going to pull them a good amount, this can always be adjusted. I'm also going to scale them in to sort of make them go like this, narrow. So in the Y direction, I'm going to go actually Go from pivot point back to median point. Median point is the uh, default. That's going to bring me back to where I was. Scale in the Y and pull my mouse in until I get this effect. Now that's roughly what I'm going for, but it's paper thin. But let's go Alt H to bring everything back. Okay, I can scale this in the Y, scale this, the whole thing so it fits a little bit better underneath there. Okay, now. A good way to add thickness, let's hide this again, to add thickness to an object is to use a modifier when you're in object mode called solidify. I want to make it more solid. Click solidify. It already puts a default thickness on there, but I'm going to slide that thickness up until I get a nice kind of thickness. I'm just like I'm making a piece of metal here. All right, let's go take and bring that back. All right. Be like that kind of all right and once I like the thickness of it and I can change that I can go more if I want all right good enough once I like the thickness let's see if I needed to do this or not I think maybe that would have helped okay I just clicked even thickness sometimes it's not always an even amount of thickness I'm gonna hit apply now I've been doing some manipulation some scaling etc so I'm gonna go um, Object, apply, rotation and scale, but I'm going to go control A. It's the same, it's a shortcut, rotation and scale, because I want to add a bevel, but not by hand, using the modifier. Bevel, I'm going to click this up to two and reduce this a little bit. I'm going to just, I'm just playing with the, the parameters to like see, and I'm going to smooth shade, and there it is. That's my piece right there. Now, this is now starting to look too thick to me and that's often what will happen you'll do stuff and this is looking too far too short so I'm going to scale this in the Z like that and I have to bring it down I think a little bit now, let's just give it a try let's select uh, I'll go ahead and apply the bevel shift S cursor to select it because this is a symmetrical object if I do that it'll go right in the middle of this object and I want my 3D cursor there because I'm going to bring in a, a makeshift wheel. I'm going to block in a wheel to start getting some dimensions and size and positions and stuff. So I'm going to go Shift A and this time I'm going to bring in a circle. It's in the wrong orientation, all right, so I'm going to rotate this around the Y, rotate Y90. Okay, there it's in the right orientation but in the wrong position. I'm going to bring that down roughly to there. Let's make this, let's make a bit of a wheel, not a real wheel yet, okay? Here's what we do. It's just a line right now. Go tab into edit mode. Make sure it's selected, okay? And hit F to make a face. 
and then E to extrude and I'm going to pull out in the E direction, give it some thickness. Now, I'm going to deselect and go back into object mode and I'm going to, I want to, I want to move this into the middle, but one thing I should do is, if I look at this, you'll notice that the origin, this circle where the uh, axes come out, is on one edge. It's not in the middle. Um, that's because it started, when I created this, it was just a thin line, right? And, and, and it was right there. And then I pulled it out. So set origin to the geometry. It pops in the middle. It just makes it easier to work with. I'm just going to move this. Scale in the X a bit more. This should go more balanced. I just want to imagine. It doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect right now anyhow. Imagine that there's a wheel there. All right. This is bugging me, the thickness. I don't think it needs to be that thick. Scale shift Z. Let's see how that affects everything else. Let's just leave it like that for now. All right. Yeah. Now these handlebars are looking far too thick. You know, and that's what you go through as you're designing it. You know, just changing it, changing it. Sometimes you, you get it the first time. Let's add a mock board to this and see how that works before I change the width of these handlebars. Uh, I'm just going to go Shift A and I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to pull it back here and I'm going to make it thinner in the Z, scale Z, like that. I'm going to make it longer, scale it in the Y, you know, to roughly what it would be like. Uh, I'm going to look at the, from the side. It's got to clear the wheel. And I actually want the board to be around almost halfway, the halfway point of the wheel. Let's say it went there. This whole area is bothering me a little bit. Okay, well, um, I think I better I better make some adjustments right away. I want to scale this, but not in the X. Actually, I wouldn't mind scaling it in the X either. Let's just scale it globally like that. And let's take these and, and uh, do origin to geometry. So it's right in the middle and scale these globally. And then I'll pull them in like that to make it a bit smaller. And I won't worry about that right now. And then let's just carry on. Just little things that may or may not work for you. Okay, let's do some work on on the wheel. All right, so uh, we get a sense of, of how you could do that. They they don't tend to be big wheels on these, so let's just work on the wheel. Um, one thing that I sometimes like to do is to work on the wheel, say in isolation. Let's bring it to another layer and just focus on that. So what you can do is you can take this and move it. See, these are the layers down here. I've got everything where that dot is all in the first layer. Let's just go M. And while you do that, click on when this stuff comes up, a different space. And you see the wheel's gone now and there's the dot, it's there, okay? You can now hit the period key and just zoom in as long as it's selected. You can also go Shift S cursor to select it. That'll put the 3D cursor on the object you're dealing with, you're working with, and that will make it a lot easier for everything. Okay, so this is going to be my tire and wheel. I should have made that clear, by the way. Uh, well, we'll see. Okay, let's go into edit mode. And in face selection, let's select that face and that face. So I'm going to make the wheel. And the wheel is the tire, sorry. The tire is a rubber piece that goes around and it doesn't go all the way into the middle. It's just the outer bark, sort of. I'm going to use the inset command and I'll show you how that's going to work with both of these faces selected. So I'm in face selection. All right, and looking at it, I'm going to, I'm going to put my mouse out here somewhere, not super close, out here, and I'm going to go that is already created some new geometry, but I'm now going to pull my mouse into about 
there. And imagine I want the rubber of my tire to go to there and I want this to disappear. It's gonna be a hole in a minute. It will do it on both sides because we selected both sides. So I'll do that again, okay? Select that face and that face. So shift select, you can do it by looking at either side, doesn't matter. Put your mouse out here, I and pull in and then click to accept. With those two still selected, I'm gonna make a hole here. I'm gonna push those together and make them disappear. The way you do that is you go Control E and search for bridge edge loops. All right, so it's like taking the edge here and making it connect to the other edge. Now, once you've done that though, you generally need to deselect. Now, I want you to see something. You see the way this is light brown, or is that orange, whatever, and this is dark? Some of my polygons have flipped. They've, they got confused during that command. Whenever you do bridge edge loops, you may have to, especially with circles, go select all of it, deselect, select it all, and come over to, oh, sorry, you don't have to come over anywhere. Control N, you want to um, mesh normals, recalculate outside, Control N. Watch the color down here, especially where it's darker. See the way it got lighter? You have forced the polygons to be recalculated so they all face outwards instead of sort of sticking their heads in the sand, facing the wrong way. So we needed to do that. So that's gonna be the start of my tire. Now, it doesn't look very tire-like yet, so let's make it smoother first of all. Add subdivision surface, bring the view up to two. Now it looks like a ring, not too much like a tire yet. So let's do some more work. Let's go into edit mode, get a view of your tire, and then I'm going to put my mouse over here and I'm gonna go Control R and I want two loops. So I roll my mouse up, two, left click, right click to be done. Now, I don't want those in that position. I want to move them to the left and to the right equally. So I'm gonna do the scale. I'm gonna scale X and pull and watch the way they move. I'm gonna do that again on the inside so you'll see that. All right, this put edge loops on the outside, but not on the inside. So I want them on the inside as well. So I'm gonna go Control R, roll my mouse wheel up once. I've got two loops, left click and right click to finalize. Now, I don't like the position of them. I'd like th this one to come out a little bit. Now, why? I'll show you in a minute. I don't know if I can explain it, okay? But assumedly you want to do this. You want to move this one to the left, this one to the right, but I don't want to do them individually, which you could, no one's gonna care. I want to do them a little bit more scientifically. Scale in the X, and they will move out in the X. Not to the very end, just to, I don't know, there. Let's deselect and come back and look at this. Let's put on smoothing as well. Um, I still wanted some roundness, but I didn't want it so round that, you know, it was crazy. All right, so that's why I put those in. If I didn't have them in, it looked like the surface would be very rounded. Ah, you you'll guess, get used to when to put in edge loops and when not to. All right, so there is that. That's the, oh no, we're not done yet. All right, now I'm gonna make the world's silliest, silliest tire. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to, in face selection, okay, shift alt and click that whole row. All right, just the outside. I'm going to extrude just like I did when I made this little piece here. All right. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm not just going to go extrude individual and pull down, although I could, couldn't I? Yeah, I could. I think maybe I will do that. I think I will. That's all I needed to do. Okay, so let's do that one more time. Okay, I'm gonna actually select it all. And you can sometimes select all and remove doubles. Sometimes you've got extra geometry there you didn't expect. Shift, Alt, and click. And we'll just go uh, extrude individual, click and pull down just a little bit to sort of make the tread. Don't deselect yet. Uh, Control R right there. I want a vertical edge loop and click and pull it to the side. Control R, left click, and pull it to the side. I know this doesn't look very realistic. I know, but look. Oh gosh. 
Look, it's a scooter. That's my scooter. That's my scooter tire so far. Okay, uh, we need to do more. We're gonna need the center part and the spokes. Now, this is not necessarily how a real wheel will go, uh, but we'll do it. But we also need another piece as well. So I've got my 3D cursor right in the middle of this tire. And if it wasn't, if it was over there, just select the tire, shift S, cursor, select. It's gonna put it in the middle of the geometry of the whole tire. Okay, shift A and bring in a circle. Oh, it's the wrong orientation. All right, so let's uh, how do I rotate this. <laughs> See, rotate Y90. All right, now where'd it go? It's two. Okay, let's scale it. Ah, okay, there it is. I want it about the size of my tire anyhow. Uh, I'll make it a bit smaller though so you can see it. Edit mode, F to make a face, E to extrude. Bring it out just a little bit. And let's go into object mode. Now, I need to center this in my tire. And so I'm gonna look at a number, I press number one. On the end, I'm gonna use wireframe. I've still got this selected and I can move this. In fact, let's do origin of geometry. Is it origin of geometry? So it's right in the middle. Why didn't that work? Let's get out of that. Did it work? Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe it was in edit mode. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Let's zoom in and, and you can position this, all right, to get it as close as you can. I think it's actually a bit too thin. Um, I know you're not sure maybe what you're looking at, but um, let's scale this in the X and just, it'll come out equally. I don't know. Let's try that. For the heck of it. Um, let's get out of that. Okay. Uh, actually, I need to scale the whole thing. I want to make it bigger now. I need it to reach the tire. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Just like we did before. Uh, I'm going to select both faces and I'm going to hit I to inset and I'm going to pull in just like that and then I'm going to go control E and bridge edge loops again. Uh, before I come out, see the discoloration selected all, control N to flip my polys. Uh, I'm not going to put a subdivision surface on this and that might be a little bit too, too wide. Uh, I'm just going to go with it though. Um, or maybe I will put a subdivision surface on it because I don't feel like bubbling it that much. Yeah, let's do that. And let's this time try putting an edge loop here on this side and pulling it up. And on this side and pulling it down. And let's do the same on the other side. Control R, I'm pulling one up and pulling one down. We're trying to control the jelly-like mass, which is our polygons just like that that's what we're gonna do okay and then you could decide maybe I want it wider scale in the X you know as long as the origin is to geometry in the middle it'll scale equally that's fine okay so we're gonna make spokes but first we need a final little central <laughs> structure um, you know makes me wonder if I could take one of these but we won't we'll do another one uh, mesh circle rotate Y90 Scale it down, make a middle section here, but we've got to give it some thickness. So go into edit mode, F to make a face, E to extrude, and pull it out in a particular direction. Not too wide. Let's deselect, go back to object mode, and make sure you go origin to geometry, because you just messed with it. Do that, and now we can look from one end in wireframe, and you can position this. And just by the way, just follow the 3D cursor, because that was in the middle in the first place. And you can put that there. Okay, so that's in the middle. All right, now, uh, we need to make this look better though. So why don't we go Object, Apply, Rotation and Scale, because I'm gonna bevel this by hand. Edit Mode, Shift Alt and click that sharp edge and that sharp edge. Control B and pull away from the center. And choose a thickness, add one, two. How about just two segments, okay? And come out and add smoothing. And hopefully that looks okay. It's a bit bubbly. Maybe um, you can also try how would edge split look? Did it do anything? It didn't do anything anyhow. All right. Maybe that's a little bit too too um, smooth. Did that help me in any way? Not really. Uh, but uh, let's do it and see if it helps. No, it doesn't help, so forget it. Let's just leave it like that. That's that's totally fine. 
Okay, so let's do spokes. Make sure this piece is selected and go shift S cursor to select it. That just double checks that everything is right in the geometrical middle of it all. I'm gonna bring in a cube, shift A, mesh, cube, and it's huge. S to scale. Scale it way down. And bring it up a little bit. And say, okay, it's too still too big. Let's make it thinner in the X. SX. So it fits into that. Let's make it thinner in the Y, SY. All right, cool. Let's lengthen it so it hits the wheel part. Let's go into edit mode. Let's let's select this polygon and we can just pull up there. It goes into there and it goes down to there. That's what we want. Let's go back into object mode. Okay, that's gonna be one of our spokes, but let's make it look a little bit better. So let's go object, apply, rotation and scale. And let's add the bevel modifier. Let's switch this segments to two and reduce this until start to get an effect that we kind of like and, sm and hit smoothing and let's say you're happy with that I'm just gonna apply the bevel okay I want to uh, let's look from the side by the way I want these to radiate around like spokes make sure you've got a pivot point right in the middle which is this object I want them to radiate it around this object so shift S cursor to select it Select the piece that you want to spin around and go into edit mode and make sure it's selected like that. Then come over to the side and click on spin. And it will create copies around this at the angle you give. But I want 360. And then you decide how many steps, how many of these. Let's go for 10. The more you make, the more your polys are going to go up. There's a couple of other things you need to, to do. You'll notice that there's some weird coloration here. So first of all, click A, click A again, select everything and click remove doubles and then look up here. Remove doubles. It, it removed some vertices. Now watch the color. I'm gonna go control N. All right, I flipped so that all my polys are facing outside. And there are my spokes. And there's my tire and wheel. I don't know if this is too thick, but I'm going to now join this and this. I'm shift alt and clicking, and uh, I'm going to join those. Now, this has got a subdivision surface, but I'm going to go ahead and apply it. Usually I don't in this, but I'm going to select everything and put it together. This is now one tire. Let's go origin to geometry on that one tire, and it's all ready to go. Okay, I can still make this thicker if I want. If I want to do that kind of a tire, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Okay, let's move this back to the first layer. Make sure it's selected, M, and click the first layer. And go back to it. And there it is. There's my tire. All right. Takes a while, doesn't it? Now we need to add another piece to make this realistic. So I'm going to... Now, the center of geometry is... Or the origin is right in the middle. So I'm going to go Shift A and bring in a cylinder and I want to rotate this around the Y. Rotate Y 90. All right, but it's huge. I want to scale this. Oops. Make sure, by the way, if you ever have your mouse outside of the stage area and you try to do a command, it won't work. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm out of the stage. Scale. I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep going till I get to around there, and then I want to scale it out in the X. Scale X until it pushes through. Okay, I just like that. Good for the moment. I'm gonna work on that some more in a second. Shrimpy tire compared to these. That's my feeling. And so, I know what I gotta do. I know what I gotta do. I'm going to change the dimensions of this. I'm gonna scale this in the Y, so it's narrower, like that, first of all. And then I'm gonna scale this in the X. So it still fits underneath here. And now I'm gonna scale my tire, scale X, so it still fits. Let's try that and see how it feels 
relative to those handlebars a little bit better for some reason I'm finding these handlebars are bugging me like crazy I might try to scale this in the Y a little bit more and see if I can get still keep it underneath there Dimensions are a little bit off. Yeah, I don't really want to change that one that much because that's affecting my tire. That's better. That's getting better. Okay, so just constant uh, adjustment. Uh, there's more here. I want to put more detail. I want to put down here. Okay, so let's I uh, scale the tire. So let's grab that cylinder and scale it in the axe till it pops through a good amount. Okay, with that cylinder there, I want to make sure that um, shift S cursor to select. I want to make sure that's selected because I'm going to bring in another another object. A shift A. I'm going to bring in another cylinder. But before I do anything, I'm going to switch this to I think eight eight sides. Rotate Y in the ninety and scale. I'm starting to speed up and, and you know I hope I'm not going too quick. Or I hope I'm not going too slow as well. Alright, I brought in a cylinder, I made it eight sides, I think. And I'm gonna fit that on there, scaling the axe. I'm just trying to get the sizing right, so I'm just pushing it down over there. Alright, and that, that that's okay, like that. Um, I've changed its rotation and its scale though, and so I need to do some manipulation. I'm going to go Control A, Rotation and Scale, and I want to come in, and I'm going to grab this upper edge, and I'm going to double Control B, pull back, get my region, and roll my mouse wheel up twice. That will give it some smoothness, and I'm going to also hit smoothing. Okay, it'll look a little bit better. Um, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to um, grab that edge and this edge at the same time and go control B, pull back. Nope, nope, I need to apply scale. Don't forget to do that periodically. Control B, pull back, roll my mouse wheel up a couple times and do that. I'll be changing the length of that in a minute. In fact, I'll just do smoothing first of all. I want this bolt on the other side as well. So I'm going to use this, which has a center right there in the middle and I can select my bolt and go add modifier, mirror, and then with the eyedropper, say with respect to the bolt, and it'll put it on the other side. I'm gonna hit apply. And I'm also gonna take this cylinder and I'm gonna scale this in the X and make it a little bit narrower equally. And that is going to be my wheel slash tire and connection. I could put a bolt up here, but I won't bother with that. Okay, so how's it looking so far? All right, um, I think what I want to do is take the tire and copy it. Let's look on this other side. You shift D and pull it towards the back. I think it's going to go. Um, I think it's going to cut into there. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I think I'll do it that way though. And I'm just getting sense of things. Well, we're doing pretty well here. Um, uh, just get a sense of uh, how high I want the board to be and where. I think I'm actually going to bring it up like that for the moment. Okay, let's let's work on. Uh, cursor to select it, put my 3D cursor there because I'm going to bring an object in there. Let's bring in a cube and we're going to make this smaller so I'm going to scale this in the X to make it narrower this way. And I'm looking against this cylinder 
so I get an idea of how narrow I want it to be. And I'm going to pull it out in the Y direction, and it's going to attach to the cylinder, but I want it to be thinner, so scale it in the Z, like you know, this kind of thing, and then pull it down. And the idea is that this piece is going to connect into the board. Uh, so I'm going to want to rotate this piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and start doing that, I think. Yeah, rotate in the X, and it's going to be like this, and then I'm just going to position this, and imagine it's there, um, and then it's going to go into the board. So I need to edit this to make it longer. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this face. Let's look from the side, it doesn't matter what side, and I'm going to pull it with the Y a little bit, pull it with the Z down. Okay, so now this is messed up, right? Because it's it's going in, which is great, but it's it's coming out the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that, and and I'm already in edit mode. I'm going to switch to edge mode. I'm going to select this edge on the bottom. This one, oh gosh, this one <laughs> right there, and I'm just going to pull it up. But as I do that, it changes the width of this. So I'm going to, uh, let's go into wireframe here. I'm going to grab this upper edge as well on the side. And I'm going to pull this like this a little bit. So it looks a little bit more natural. Let's make sure it's not coming through the other side. No, it's not. So it's roughly equal. All right. And that's, it's going to be OK. We're just getting an idea here. Just going to connect something like that. Okie dokie. So, that being the case, it's time to start working on the actual board. Scaling in the X a little bit, and deciding how thick and how long, scaling it in the Z. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I want to have a hole in the board that this is going to connect to. Uh, this could be a little thinner, by the way, scale it in the X. All right, so the way I'm going to do this is to, first of all, hide that piece. And uh, actually, no, I'm going to bring it back. Alt-H to bring it back. Um, I want to cut into the board. All right, so I mean, there's top view there. I'm going to go into edit mode for the board. And I'm going to put in two edge loops. Control R this way, though. Two like that. Click to accept. And that is pretty good thickness. But now I want it closer than that. Closer to this piece. So scale in the X and push in. Just like that. Okay. And I want to create an indentation. But I don't want it to be the, for the whole length of the board. I want it to be Control R. Put in an edge loop up to about maybe there. All right, so I'm de delineating my area that I want. All right, let's hide this, go back into edit mode, and in face selection, I'm going to select that face, and this face, and this face, and I'm now going to delete them. X faces. But now I've got some gaping holes, I'm going to close those up. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, which is also available down there, and I'm going to select four vertices that make up a box and hit F. So let's see, I see another box here if I select and you can do it in any order. One, two, three, four. That makes a box or a quad, that's four. One, two, three, four, F to make a face and it's filled in, okay? Just like that. So let's go Alt H and imagine that piece comes back. We may have to do some manipulation here. Yep. I think I'm just going to move this back a little bit. How far down is that going? All right. That's okie doke. All right. Do I have a piece I can use? If there's a piece, if you've got something you can use, use it. It's in the right orientation, you know. Shift D. Take the cylinder. It's also central, centrally located. And this is what I want. Oh, not that. Yeah. Okay, 
I need to do some work on this. Yeah, uh, what I need to do is I need to grab this edge, I do, and I need to actually pull it down. In wireframe mode, I do need to pull it down. I want that there. And I am going to sorry, select that edge. I should have done this before. I'm going to pull it back to make it straightish. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, okay? And I want that piece sort of like that. Like a pin in there. All right, this is not done yet, but that's basically what I want. Okay, let's work on uh, this a little bit more and see if I can uh, fix this. This, grab that edge right there, and pull it back, and just to make this look a little bit nicer. thick anyhow. So, uh, this scale in the X a bit more. So I see that more that cylinder. Okay, let's control uh, let's select that piece, control A rotation and scale, and add bevel to and scroll back till you get something that you like. And smooth. And that is that piece right there. Okay, I'm going to do some work on the board itself. And it's actually too thick, so scale in the Z, and we'll see if I've messed up that cylinder. If it still looks like it's attaching properly, and it seems to. Uh, let's do some work on the board. Um, let's try to decide. Um, Let's go control A, rotation and scale. I think I want the same thing at the back. I think I want a cutaway at the front and at the back, but I also want some, do I want the same beveling? No, I, don't, I think I might, well, yeah, maybe I will. All right, so I'm gonna select this edge and this edge. I'll zoom in and I'm gonna go control B, I'm gonna pull back. I'm just gonna do that. I'm just going to chop it off like that. All right, and I'm going to add bevel. Like that. I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. Um, but I want the same thing at the back. Don't worry about this stuff here. So I'm going to cut this in half. I think I am. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the bevel. I'm going to go in top view, in wireframe, and in vertex, and I'm going to select the back, and I'm going to pull it up to near there. Because I'm then going to select the whole thing and go Shift D, rotate Z 180 degrees, to flip it around and pull it back to like there. And then I'm gonna join these, all right? And the way I'm gonna join them is I'll get out a wireframe. And there are faces there and that may cause a problem. So I'm gonna select the faces, all these. And I'm gonna delete them, X, delete faces. And I still have the edges. I'm gonna go Shift Alt and click that. And that's gonna make a, a ring all the way around. I'm gonna Shift Alt and click that as well. And then I'm gonna go Control E bridge edge loops and then I'll put them together and I've got that you know cut away at the front and the back make sure you clear that is that wide enough for the tire to be in there I didn't think about that did I damn it I didn't think about whether or not it's wide enough for a tire to fit and I don't want to change the diameter of my tires 
can I just change the width of the board to scale in the X? I have to, well, is that enough or no, not quite? No, it's not enough, is it? I don't want it to be too wide, although, let's try again, let's try a little bit more. No, okay, there's a better way to do this anyhow. All right, well, that was an unexplained or unexpected problem. In fact, it might be a nice idea to have it a little bit different at the back and at the front if I can. Um, so let's go into wireframe and let's go into vertex and let's have a look. Um, what I'm thinking is I could select all of this and by doing a wireframe, I select the top and the bottom vertices. I'm just going to try scale in the X. Okay, it's going to pull it that way, right? Um, if I put in another edge loop, I put that up to there, and I go select that. Scale in the X. I can create a room in the back. All right, by putting that edge a bit blocks my scale from going all the way down to the rest of it. And I can now make the back wider than the front, which may or may not be a good thing. Okay, let's go back into object mode and put on bevel and see how she's looking. Oops. Oh, jeez. That's awfully big. You know what I think would be very cool? What if I change the width of that back tire? That's what I really wanted to do anyhow, wasn't it? I wanted a big sort of tire in the back. I, I don't know. Does that look ridiculous? I, I just kind of wanted to do that anyhow. All right, anyways, let's move on. We're get, I mean, we're getting close to the end anyhow. Um, yeah, so let's let's just build that. Let's just do that. Uh, I need some way to connect to to hold on to these to this tire. Uh, let me just double check. So I had that coming down. Jeez, I can't. Well, I could come come from there. Let's try. We're going to try something. So what does that look like? Cylinder first. Oh, great. Okay, fine. So let's just use the same cylinder we used before, right? Let's repeat. Let's grab that cylinder and go Shift D and pull it back and put it put it there right in the middle okay right I don't know if, how much of in the middle it is but uh, there okay and okay and what I'm gonna do is this all connected yeah fortunately okay well that's all right we can we'll mess around with this I'm gonna build off of this I'm gonna actually make this wider uh, this this back for this back tire so I'm gonna scale shift X want it nice and big uh, and it may actually have to be wider in the X like that because I'm gonna make it connect and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm probably gonna work on just one side I'm gonna go into edit mode and face selection and uh, I'll, I'll do it this way. I'm going to scale this in the X again further out because I'm going to connect this piece to this piece. And I'm going to make sure that's smooth down the road. And uh, we'll see if we like the... Uh, we'll do stuff like that. Okay, so just don't worry about that yet. Um, yeah, so I want a piece of this to connect to that. But I, I, I'm going to put in an edge loop here. And I'm going to pull it down to like maybe there. And I'm gonna look in top view, I think. I'm gonna hide this and look in top view. So you can see the center pretty much. And I'm gonna grab, I think that's pretty much top down. I think maybe two, I could go for four. Right around the center. Yeah, I'll go for four of these. Look at the side. And I'm gonna hit E to extrude and pull up like that. Let's just come out of that and go Alt H and bring that back. So you can see that I haven't gone up enough yet. So I'm gonna go back, back into edit mode, and I'm gonna keep pulling. Um, but I'm, um, yeah, that's all right. That's totally fine. It's gonna pull it up. Okay, and I'm not gonna worry about that yet. That's gonna be basically what I want to do. So. 
take this and uh, pull it back a tiny bit and have that still without a problem. Yeah, that can work. That can work. Okay, so let's work on this then. Okay, so it's going to be like that. Let's go back into this oh, and select this face and go I and bring it in a little bit. It's not too much. All right, like that. And I uh, put an edge loop here, drag it up. I think I'll drag one down as well. And I'll get that. And what I'm going to do is I want this on both sides. So I'm just actually going to hide the wheel and take this. And I'm going to put an edge loop right in the middle. Well, it's actually not in the middle, but roughly in the middle. And I'm going to cut this in half and mirror it over. Uh, so uh, I just want to look in the back. Whichever side. Ah, geez, I'm fading away from beginnerness and I'm just starting to speed up because I think I'm getting tired and, and, and the video's been going on for so long and I apologize for that. Um, I'm going to delete these vertices, all right? And with this piece, I'm going to go to modifier, mirror, and I'm going to mirror it right across the other side. I'm just going to hit apply and no, I'm not. And then hit apply here. And uh, let's see if I need to go into it. There's a join, it looks fine to me. All right, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so I have this, all right, and that connects to the to that piece there. Alt H, bring back my tire. And I got my tire, that's pretty crazy. Um, gee, I applied that already, eh? Mm. We didn't do much to the end there. Let's fix, let's fix that end. Make it look a, bit, a little bit better. It's uh, ah, so busy in there, and I didn't get anything good good out of it. And let's grab this face, and let's grab this face, and let's go E to extrude, and we'll go scale X and pull in. Let's see if we get anything out of that. We get that. Wow, crazy. That's all right. Oh, I gotta live with that. Something different. Um. Okay, so the whole thing is too long in my, well, no, I don't know, maybe not. Uh, what about too thin? Let's try scaling this set. Is that better? Yeah, there's a couple of things to work on and we're done. Um, I don't like these gaps too much, but maybe you can just bring front stuff back a bit. Okay, let's try that. Let's try B to box select and grab all of that stuff. And let's also try to get this, not that, but this cylinder. And let's just try moving it back and seeing if this is, if, the, if I like this. I think I do. I think it looked that, that looks okay. That's what I wanted to do. Um. Okay, let's work on that. Okay, so let's apply apply the bevel. Now you'll notice some weird stretching patterns, and the, what I'm going to do is is simply go into edit mode. I think I'm going to. Do I want to try something different? Do I want to try subdivision surface? I don't think I do, but I could. I could do that. I still get some pulling. What I really think I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these faces. I don't know that I need all the little ones, but select all of these faces. You know what? The more faces I can get, the better. Um, if I just do it all globally, no, that didn't work. Okay, uh, I'll stop screwing around here. Um, darn, I gotta go down pretty far to get rid of that. So, what I'm gonna do is, um, 
Uh, probably do subdivision surface anyhow. That looks okay. That's fine. I just keep wanting if it's too thin. It's got a decent amount of detail. We could maybe even do something on here too. We might be able to select that face and this face and um, inset, pull it in, and then go um, E and scale X and push in to get this kind of effect. I just have to make sure that it doesn't affect my cylinder too much and you can't really see that oh the cylinder's right in the middle of it so we could do that just to add another little touch if we thought we needed to i think we're oh yeah there was one another thing i want to do shift s cursor to selected and i want to bring in a plane and pull it up and scale it in the x to make it thinner and scale it in the y and position it um, make it longer and move it down so it's kind of central move it over to the side of it and scale the axe a bit more okay I'm going to go into edit mode and select it and and, and extrude it you need to extrude and pull up a little bit to give it some thickness select it all in control and in case any polys were flipped go back into object mode and control a rotation and scale and then put the bevel on it I'm just going to leave the default bevel on that. It's fine. Push it down till it touches the surface. Oh boy. Right, get in there just a little bit. And then add modifier array. And I am going to position, I'm just going to adjust this until it goes in the right direction. And I'm going to increase the count till I get the right number that I will fit. I'm going to do this kind of thing, make a sort of a, a Grip pattern for your feet, something like that. Have a look at that. If I like the pattern, I can just get to hit apply, and then I can work on the positioning a little bit better. You know, this kind of thing. Did I push it in too much? Maybe I did. Eh? Okay. Oops. And I can set origin to geometry, and I can save that. I'm going to go ahead and apply that subdivision surface so I can join this. Control J. And I think we have done it pretty much. And pretty much. Did we do what we wanted to do? We did. We made it. All right. And it looks a little bit different than the than the one in the diagram, but not that much different, really. Right. Let's Oh, I didn't do the little flare, but I mean that's not critical. Right? There's that compared to that. Oh yeah, let's let's quickly do the uh, shock absorber. Okay, and that's really easy to do. Just take your cylinder and go Control R. Uh, actually, I'll do a few of them. Okay, Control R. Roll your mouse wheel up a few times. All right, scale them in the Z so they're nice and close together. And bring them down to the area that you want them in and um, yeah the problem is that things in the way right they, they were below that so what's the deal with that we need to angle that more jeez I thought it was done but I might not be if that's the case let's try something here I need to uh, try rotating this in the X and seeing if that. Nah, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to change that. And so, what I'll do is all those edge loops I just made, I can dissolve those. I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to make this scale this in the Z a lot smaller. And I'm going to lengthen this by grabbing its face and pulling it down into that. And then I'm going to put edge loops down here. I'll put a few of them. I may not use that many. I'm going to scale them in the Z nice and tight. And I'm going to pull them down here. 
that's fine. And I'm going to uh, grab this one and this one and this one. Okay, Shift Alt and click that those rolls. That's good. Heat extrude scale Shift Z. Pull them out. Do that kind of thing, and then I'm going to add subdivision surface on this. Uh, this one here, and I'm going to fix this though. I don't want that resting on my tire. All right. Doesn't need to be that wide. Scale shift set. Oh, yeah, it does for that for that device. And this edge looks. This piece is underneath it, so that's okay. Let's let's uh, hide that for a second and shorten this piece here. I don't know what was going on with that. And uh, come up to this piece here. So fucked up. Grab that edge. Pull it down to around there. And put an edge loop here to tame this stuff. Let's see what I got here. Okay, I see. I see. I see. And Alt H, bring that back. And this came up. To underneath that. Okay, fair enough. So let's let's uh, actually uh, bring that under there. That's what I wanted to do. All right. And this one. So just some final touch up uh, manipulations. There we go. Okay. So I don't know if that any of that, any of that made sense to you, but uh, and I also want to move this whole thing down. I don't like its position up there, and that's why I'm running into trouble. Ah, yes. Okay, because I keep bringing it down and it's showing through. Okay, fine. So let's hide uh, some of this. And let's shorten this a nice amount so when I bring it down, Alt H. I can just bring it down. Take this and this and all this stuff. And we can bring it down and push it in like that. That's okay. There. That's what I wanted. Okay. Still feel that this is too big. I'm just going to do a global scale to make it smaller. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now it's now it's starting to look like a real, a real McCoy. All right. And then I can just do a, a little render like that just to check it out. And uh, you know, I did a lot of manipulations. Some of them a little bit quick. You know. Uh, and if I really, if I was going to do this, I'd go back through and I'd say, what am I doing with this? Why is this so wide? You know, sometimes you don't see it at first, and you, you, you tone it down, and then you, you feel like it, it looks better once you've done that. But then you do that, and then you say, hey, well, now this looks too too long to me, you know, for what it's supposed to be doing, you know, like this kind of thing. And then you, you figure, you know, hey, I should have some bolts here and there and some extra design elements and you know and that's the way it goes and really this does look too wide to me scale shift set you know 
and, and you, you'll do that and uh, you might get a better feel you get a better product anyhow I'm not crazy about some of this so I maybe I would I would work on that but but that's you know basically what we get out of out of this and uh, we just get a decent render uh, I could put that as the thumbnail there I could I could go with that all right so that's that so I hope that helps some of you and thank you for watching